Alright, this is just going to be a simple Maya tips video, something that uh, everyone who uh, gets into Maya should at least be aware of. Uh, you, you may not use them uh, uh, all too often though. But first, I would like to go over uh, marking menus and gesturing. So I'm going to go ahead and create a plane. I'm just going to hold down shift there and right click. And we've got a plane and I'm going to select edge and I would like to split, I would like to select this edge ring and then split. So I'm going to right click, uh, hold down control and right click edge ring utilities, two edge ring and split. Now that was kind of slow, I had to right click and do that. So this is actually a faster way. You can the marking menus will work. Uh, you don't have to wait for them to pop up. You can just if you know the gesture, you can just do it like this. And then of course if I hit G a few times, that operation repeats and we've got this. So uh for example you can uh bring up stuff so now when I create a plane I don't have to wait for that marking menu. I can just do that. And so the more you use Maya, the 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 more you get into it, you will uh, start to memorize where everything uh, where everything is, and then you can just start uh, uh, doing operations without really waiting for the marking menu menu to pop up. So I, I recommend that uh, it'll make you work faster. Okay, so the next thing I would like to go over is uh, virtual sliding. So I'm going to create a sphere, and you can see that uh, you may be aware of. of uh, virtual sliding if you've even used Maya for a little bit of time. So that's one of the basic things you learn. But it's also possible to do this in the attribute editor. So I'm going to go to the uh, spheres transform node and I'm going to uh, control. And I'm, I'm holding down control and what it's doing is I'm going left and right. So I'll control left and right. And you'll use this sometimes but uh, most of the time you'll be animating through the uh, channel box. But if you need a little bit of uh, precision here or be able to scrub then you've got hold down control uh, click inside the field and left right mouse okay so that's pretty neat and the next thing I would like to go over is uh, adding expressions to the attribute editor so I'm going to create a cube and through here I'm just going to bevel it a bit and add a offset of 0.2 just it's pointless but just having some fun with that okay so I would like to add an expression to the attribute editor and you can do that by just uh, say I don't know. Let's use the translate again. Let's do use translate, translate x. So you, you do it by starting off and pre pressing equals. And so, for example, I could say, no, I could say uh, equals frame. So, and frame is a reserved, uh, reserved string in Maya for the actual uh, uh, value here. So the frame. So as time goes on, uh, translate x is equal equals the frame. So the point here is, let's say you have an expression. It's very, very simple and you would like to type it into uh, a field. You don't have to right click and uh, create a new expression and edit it through the expression editor or a text editor. You can just uh, quickly type in equals and then a one line expression. You may even be able to type more lines but make sure that you use those, uh, uh, you follow the syntax and use uh, uh, semicolons. Okay, so between lines. Okay. Uh, next is timeline hotkey for scrubbing time. Now this is uh, very neat. Let's say that you've got, uh, actually I'm going to keep that, and you've got an animation going, and you know your timeline is hidden. You can actually scrub through the timeline. It's a default hotkey, so you hold down K, and as you can see when I hold that button down we've got uh, little arrows on the screen, and so then you just use the uh, left mouse button, uh, drag left and right, so that. And here's another thing, you can also use, uh, hold down K, and instead of using left and right, uh, mouse button, you can use the middle mouse button, and that will actually slide through time, but it won't evaluate time. So, for example, if I bring back my time slider and I hold down K and then left mouse button, you can see I'm going through time. And of course, since we've got an expression on the translate X of this uh, cube, we've got uh, motion. But if I hold down the middle mouse button along with K, so K and the middle mouse button, we're going through time, but we're not evaluating it. And that's useful if you want to uh, copy a key from, say, frame 50 to 100 because you need just uh, uh, to do that, but you don't want uh, time to be, to be evaluated, so let's say you want to anchor something down. Okay, so uh, the next thing on our list is grid snapping. We're going to retain component spacing in rolled space. Well, this tip will work with anything, uh, any sort of snapping, but I'm just going to uh, show it with uh, grid snapping. So I'm going to create a cube and scale it up, select all of its faces, and add some divisions and hit G to get quite a few in there and I'm going to select let's see make sure we've got camera based selection on and just select uh, 
those right there, and just move them out, and then sort of select that one, move that out too. So let's say that I want to snap all of these vertices into uh, to make sure that they're in line with this grid line. Now, uh, the first thing is I can go ahead and use a gesture, so I'm going to press Shift, middle mouse button, hold down X, and hold down the middle mouse button and gesture to this point. But as you can see, we're not getting, they're not all going along the line. So the first thing you might say, well, uh, I can turn off retain component spacing, and retain component spacing is down in the move options. We've got retain component spacing. As you can see when I change this in the marking menu, so if you hold down W and you left click, you've got the marking menu, the move tool marking menu, and you deactivate keep spacing. You can see you can do that quickly uh, by using the marking menu. Um, but, but, not, but now what you'll see is if I do the same thing, so let's say that I'm going to turn off camera base selection, move these over here, and I'm going to attempt to do the same thing. So hold down X, shift, middle mouse button. Uh, look, the problem is still there. We're still getting that they're not of course lining up. And to do that you need to switch your move settings from whatever they may be, so for example in this case they're local, and you switch them to world. And by switching to world, uh, we can do this again, shift, middle mouse button, X, gesture. And now everything is lined up, and if we go into the perspective view you can see that everything works good. Alright, so uh, that's how you solve uh, that problem uh, in case you run into it. Alright, so uh, Unlike the last tip that I just showed you, which is something that you would use only once in a while, I'm going to show you how to uh, move and scale using gesturing. This is uh, very useful. You don't even have to click uh, the object so to move it. So, for example, traditionally you may have to click the axis handles and move it. Uh, move the object and click in the middle and move that. Well, you don't have to do that in Maya. You can just hold down shift and hold down middle mouse button and gesture. So, for example, gesture, gesture. I can go up too. And it, it'll take a bit of time to get used to, and uh, depending on how uh, difficult it is to press your middle mouse button, it may tire you out. Well, it, it'll hurt your finger after a while, but if you've worked after several hours. But um, uh, it's definitely useful to try and, and at least be aware that it, that it uh, is there, because you can really uh, do some quick tweaks and stuff without even selecting the object. So uh, that's pretty nice. And um, I'll also show you, let's say that you have an axis selected, so I hold down uh, shift, middle mouse button, and moved. So I'm holding down shift, and then middle mouse button, gesturing. And as I gesture, when I make a direction, Maya takes that first direction, the first millisecond of that direction, and it, of course, uh, ch uh, constrains the axis uh, movement. But let's say that you want to go back to the other one. You don't have to click on this, you can just uh, click on E and W, for example, so you could re-invoke the move tool. So, for example, uh, Q and W. Uh, in Maya 2011, uh, it appears that you don't even have to do that now. You can just you can move and then press W, and it'll, of course, uh, choose the center handle again by default. And then you can also move in screen space doing that too. So, anyway, uh, that's that. Uh, the last step here is something that you probably rarely use, but it's it's kind of neat to know. So, I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, you can access all the menus, of course, to the hotbox, but I'm going to bring up the menu bar and press F4 to go to surfaces, and I'm going to tie, uh, <laughs> tear off the edit NURBS menu, and I'm just probably going to go ahead and create a NURBS sphere. I'm going to scale it up using that same uh, gesturing technique I just did, and let's see, move it over there, probably scale it down, frame up on it, and let's say that I'm I'm rebuilding surfaces, right? And I would like to get to the options box without having to click on this, because when you click in a command, uh, it executes the options that are in here. And this is the actual options for it. So for example, I can say, okay, I want to uh, rebuild uh, uniform parameterization, uh, parameter range of 0 to 1, change the span, so 6 and 6, uh, we'll have cubic, degree U and V, and we'll output the geometry as NURBS, and we won't keep the original, and we'll rebuild. So now we've got a uh, new parameterization, uh, which is surface history on this NURBS object. But that's not the point of this. The point is that you can hold down shift and alt and this is where the tip comes in shift and alt and select uh, an option or select a uh, command that has options to it so shift and alt and look at that you've got the options box so let's say that you you're working really fast and you're uh, trying to get something done you, you and you have a menu pulled out and you want to go to the options box you can just hold down shift and alt and once you reach over here click on the command as if you're going to execute it but then it'll bring up the option box so shift and alt uh, so that's really it uh, uh, thanks for watching. I hope some of these tips were useful to you. Uh, you probably won't use half of them, but 
they're good to know and in some cases they could save you a, a few seconds of uh, time.